If you've been paying attention, then right about now you'd notice that we've covered 8 of the states that make up Austria. Which means that today's episode is the last of the series and it'll be entirely dedicated to Vorarlberg. Hello and welcome to 7 Facts, I hope you'll enjoy this one too. Vorarlberg is the westernmost tiny corner of Austria. It houses less than 400,000 people that live in a mostly mountainous area. Its complicated looking name means before the Arlberg, deriving from the numerous mountain pines there or Arlen as they are called. It's small, quiet, beautiful and out of the way. Nothing out of the ordinary ever happens here and there's not a lot to talk about. Or is there? Join me for the next few minutes as we uncover the last piece of Austria. In order to better understand a foreign land, it's good to know a little bit about the history of the place. In the case of Vorarlberg, its history goes way back. Once upon a time, long before the Romans ever conquered the area, there were two Celtic tribes that called this place home, the Reti and the Vindaliki. Brigantion was the main settlement, founded around 500 BC, although other settlements have already existed for about 1000 years. Named after the Briganti tribe, that settlement would go on to become Pagans, today's capital city of the state. In 15 BC the Romans came, they saw and they conquered. For the next four centuries they ruled Vorarlberg until they themselves crumbled and their territories were conquered by Alemannic tribes. Thus the era of Germanic rulers began and Vorarlberg switched hands between several Germanic states. In 1525 the powerful Habsburg dynasty took control and that's the way things stayed until World War I began. That is when, apart from the flying bullets and bombs, things started to change and modern Vorarlberg was beginning to take its shape. But more on that in a bit. Bregenz is the beautiful little capital of Vorarlberg. It sits on the shores of Lake Constance, one of the largest and prettiest in Europe. Bregenz is beautiful in itself and is definitely worth a visit, while at the same time its surroundings are nothing short of an alpine wonderland. And when you grow tired of the land, you can take a cruise ship on Lake Constance. The best time to visit though is July and August. That's when the Bregenzer Festspiele or the Bregenz Festival takes place. It's a music festival that gathers world famous opera singers, orchestras and some 150,000 visitors from all over the world. The main stage is floating on the waters of Lake Constance and is the biggest open air floating stage in the world. The festival began the year after World War II ended and it's what puts Bregenz on the maps to this day. Now back to the history lesson. Because you see, right after World War I something interesting happened in Vorarlberg. Many of its residents had an increasing desire to split away from Austria and join Switzerland. So a referendum was held and 80% of the voters supported the accession to the Swiss Confederation. However, Vorarlberg remained and still is to this day a part of Austria. So what happened? Well, on the one hand, the state's assembly was hesitant to take any serious action to join Switzerland. The political leaders were not in favor of leaving Austria but were forced to do something given the results of the referendum. On the other hand, the Swiss Federal Council also kinda opposed this move. The Swiss, French and Italians were reluctant to take in another German-speaking area. Swiss Protestants also disliked the idea of incorporating a heavily Catholic area into the country. Other countries also intervened. Italy for instance was pressuring Switzerland to give up Ticino if there were any changes to the country's borders. Vienna and the Allies were also strongly against such a union. When it became clear that not even Switzerland supports a political union between the two, the idea was abandoned. The people of Vorarlberg though did keep their strong independent attitude. To this day Vorarlberg is the only state that defines itself in its constitution as an independent state within Austria. Despite being a small piece of land, it did not go unnoticed at UNESCO. The UN agency identified and created a protected biosphere reserve here, the Corsus Walsertal. There are only 3400 people living here but nearly 200,000 tourists visit it every year. This reserve strives for a sustainable economy and tourism, so everything around here revolves around farming and nature. 
Out of the 180 farms of the reserve, almost half are 100% organic. Aside from its natural landscape, tourists can also enjoy agro-tourism, music, literature and culinary festivals, and of course, hiking. Lots and lots of hiking. Tourism is of great importance for the whole of the state. Both in winter and in the summer, Vorarlberg receives up to 2.2 million visitors every year. But, since the state is nestled between the mighty Alps, winter is when most tourists arrive here. The spectacular mountains and numerous ski resorts are without exaggeration a tourist magnet. Skiing, snowboarding, ice skating, free riding, snow parks and sled dog rides are just some of the activities that you can try out. Not to mention the locals' warm hospitality, great food and awesome culture. Vorarlberg's resorts may not be the biggest, but they are certainly some of the best in Europe. So, Vorarlberg is a bit isolated from the rest of Austria. Thus, it has an independent mindset, but they also set themselves apart by culture and language. Most people in Vorarlberg speak a very distinct German dialect, and other Austrians may have difficulty understanding it. You see, the rest of Austria speaks an Austro-Bavarian dialect of the German language, while Vorarlberg is more in tune with its other German neighbors like Bavaria, Liechtenstein or Switzerland, where the Alemannic dialect is prevalent. The traditional costumes, traditions and cuisine also have a more Western influence than from the rest of Austria. All of these things make Vorarlberg a unique slice of Europe that, despite its small size, is definitely worth discovering. And that's all for today's episode, I hope you enjoyed that. Don't forget to like and subscribe before you leave. Leave your comments downstairs and if you wish to do so, you can help out this channel through my Patreon page. I do hope to see you next time, bye.